is up guys it is john from side hustle experiment if you're new to the channel welcome in today's video i'm going to kind of just do a business update haven't done one of these in a while i know you guys kind of like these uh haven't posted a video in a little bit just been super busy um so yeah let's just get into it so as some of you know i ended up moving so i've been really caught up in kind of getting the new place set up getting things into place um, so I haven't had a ton of time to make content, but plan is to get back on track. So what have I been up to? Um, we had a really good, um, July, uh, we were up, so that is good. Uh, the business keeps going up, which is awesome. Um, a lot of the new things I've put into place, um, sourcing different categories, um, doing different s sourcing. I'll talk about those in other videos. Um, it's really, really starting to pay off. Um, I did come across um, a really unique opportunity um, that is now over. Um, so what happened was I found a promo code. It was auto inputted and basically it was for a huge amount off and the promo code didn't expire. So for the last three to four months, I've been using this promo code. Um, it's been great. I've been getting a ton of inventory um, with it. And then pretty much I think other people found it or got it, um, started getting on those listings, and now the promo code no longer works. So there are a couple of things to take away from this. One, when you find opportunities like this, you have to take advantage of them and really, um, go hard um, and because this doesn't happen that often um, and I did a pretty good job of that this time around I don't think I would have really bought any more of what I bought but I probably could have looked a little harder on the site to see if I could find some other stuff or other opportunities I probably could have found a lot more stuff if I did the prep um, because a lot of, there are a ton of bundle opportunities and when you're doing bundles to prep center, um, it can get really expensive quickly. Um, so that is definitely that. But another thing to think about this too, while you have to take advantage while you can, just remember you can't build your business based on stuff like this. It is great for momentum to get these spikes, but stuff like this typically tends to go away um so it's not going to be like that forever so you always have to be sourcing sourcing other sites um sourcing other types of products uh for me it just kind of stinks because obviously i figured out a bunch of stuff to buy on this website um and now that it's no longer working it's not that it was wasted time because i made probably tens of thousands of dollars off of this um but um, it's just one of those things where you always kind of be ready to pivot and look at other things. Now, I could definitely apply um, what kind of the items I was sourcing and see if I could find them um, at cheaper prices elsewhere. Um, but for now, uh, I'm just gonna kind of sell through the rest of what I have. Who knows, maybe it will happen again, but like I said, when these opportunities pop up, go hard, be smart about it, um, and just realize that while we always think like no one's gonna find this or we're gonna be the only ones forever, that's usually not the case. Uh, other people will start to find them and just be weary of buying like a ton when the offer count is going up um, and people are starting to find out about it. I did pretty good job of this on most of them. Uh, there's one that I still have a bunch of, uh, but it's starting to move. So sometimes you just, it doesn't look like it's going up and then it spikes up and there's really nothing you can do about it, except kind of be wide and not deep. Um, what else do I have here? Talking about prep, I plan, now I have a pretty big space down here. I'm probably gonna start doing some prep myself. 
I've been really OA to prep uh, for probably like the last year. And I love my prep center. I love working with them. Uh, but there are definitely some opportunities that I could take advantage of um, if I were to prep myself. And this is stuff that is just really, it has to be worth it. Um, I'm talking kind of like higher profit, um, just things that I know if I sent to a prep center and it kind of, you know, took like 10 days to process or five days to process, um, it might not be profitable uh, just because it's a hot sale or a hot item. These are the kind of things that need to be sent in very quickly to kind of take advantage of these certain opportunities. Um, and I think it's important to note, I know a lot of people kind of poo-poo uh, doing their own prep um, and you should just be OA to prep so you could be location independent and all that other stuff. And I think that's great. And yeah, I don't think prep is the highest value activity you could be doing. But if the opportunity makes sense to me, I'm all about it. I mean, I don't really mind doing the prep, to be honest. Uh, I, I'm only prepping like really easy items, like put a sticker on something, put a couple things in a bag, like nothing like crazy. Um, but it also is where I am. I know as soon as the packages get picked up, they're gonna be checked into a warehouse within like three to four days. Right now, uh, all of my prep, like all the stuff that goes to the prep center goes to West Coast uh, fulfillment centers and they definitely tend to be a little slower. Um, so it's really important to take advantage and do what makes the most sense for your business. And it doesn't matter. You have to do what works for you. So I'm excited to take um, advantage of opportunities uh, that come up. I also know there are some stores that I could get stuff to, my, to where I am at now within a day or two. So the turnaround times could be super quick, um, which is gonna be awesome. And I think it's gonna be really big for my business, it's gonna really help speed things along. Um, also, when you're doing your own prep, obviously you're saving in prep fees. You are also probably recouping cash more quickly because you're getting it, you're sending it out. Whereas, depending on where your prep center is, if I sent something, let's just say I ordered something from Walmart or whatever, it would get here, let's say I ordered it today. Today is Tuesday. Uh, it comes, let's just say it comes tomorrow or Thursday, right? So I get it then. So if that was at the prep center, right, that's going to just sit f like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. My stuff gets sent out on Wednesday. But if I get that on Wednesday and then send it out Thursday, Friday, right, it's already on its warehouse to the warehouse, it's probably gonna get there by Monday or Tuesday, instead of just going out on Wednesday afternoon. So there's definitely some advantages to doing prep yourself. Um, and I just kinda wanted to bring that up. I know a lot of people ask or say, oh, I don't have a prep center. Um, I don't really wanna get one. And it's your business, you can do what you want. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but I think it's gonna be like really good. Um, and I just don't really mind it. Again, really easy stuff. So you're gonna definitely take advantage of having the extra space. What else is going on? What else do I have down here? Uh, so I will say the, a couple other things. So I've been testing a lot of different products um, in terms of not your typical keep a chart. So things or the typical things people say to buy. You know, under 100K rank, make sure it has a buy box, make sure it's being rotated, don't compete against Amazon, all that kind of stuff. So I have done all of these on a couple of listings, um, or products rather, and I kind of want to go over kind of what I found. I just kind of did some repricing today um, to kind of move these items a little faster and there are just a couple of common things that i've noticed 
So for things, so let's cover number one, competing against Amazon. Competing against Amazon could be a really great opportunity, but uh, it can also not go well. <laughs> so I definitely have been doing, whenever I'm doing these tests, I'm doing test buys, uh, even if the inventory sells through, um, let's say I buy 10, right? It sells through in, let's say a week. Depending on what the listing looks like, I might only buy another 10 or maybe 15, 20 ish. Um, just really depends until I do like three or four turns because Amazon can do whatever it wants at any given time. So these products are a little bit more riskier to be on. And there is one where it's kind of, you have to do a test buy when you're doing this stuff. Um, Keepa is very good. I mean, it's one of the most important tools um, that you could use in your business, but it's not 100% accurate. There are some things that have, you know, Amazon, it looks like they're on the listing for the whole time. Uh, when you open up the Keepa and you see the buy box rotation, Amazon's only getting the buy box about, I don't know, let's say 10% of the time. It looks like they're on the listing the whole time, but they're only getting it 10% of the time. So just keep that in mind. But what I have come to learn is one, competing against Amazon, I've when I did really well with a product um, with them um, and it was going great and nothing on the listing really changed. But all of a sudden my share of the buy box went way down and more people didn't come in the listing. It basically looks the same. So I don't know if Amazon was kind of just low in stock when I was winning the buy box more or what the deal is, but that kind of stuff I'm not really going to replenish just because it's moving a lot slower now. Um, and I'm just not going to do that. Number two, they could drop the price at any time. So I was on one listing where it was selling, let's just say hypothetically, this isn't it. But for $100, and Amazon was at $100 for the last year, well, they decide to drop it to, let's say, $80, um, which is a huge drop and probably on most products no longer profitable for you. Um, so what does that mean? That means it's really hard to get off the listing now because you're going to have to take a loss, number one. And number two, you're competing against Amazon. Um, which obviously they could keep going lower um, or you're just going to have to be under them and hope that they give you the buy box. Typically they will. You could be a couple pennies under them and then you'll still get sales whether or not you get the buy box. But that's kind of what I learned on being on Am competing against Amazon. Will I do in the future? Uh, probably not. Um, overall, I think it was really good. I did a good job but also super stressful. Um, just some listings, um, which were doing really well, all of a sudden like that, just, you know, stop getting buyback share, they dropped their price, the lowest price in two years. Um, and I just kind of don't like that. It's very unpredictable. And I think a lot, there's a lot of listings where Amazon is not on, and I'd rather be on listings like that. Number two, no buy box and no rank. So these two kind of go hand in hand uh, a little bit, but we're gonna cover the no rank first. So no rank means that the product doesn't have a BSR. Um, you, all you can really tell when you're buying those products is you wanna see the review count going up um, because that means that obviously it's getting sales because people are leaving reviews. So it's not often that people leave reviews. So if it is going way up, um, you know, people have to be buying it. Uh, so that is kind of one metric for that. And then you have to kind of rely on the offers tab a little bit in Keepa to see who is winning it and kind of what price they're getting. These listings could be really lucrative um, because it's hard to read. It's hard to figure out what's really going on. 
So doing test buys definitely helpful with that. So these no rank products of kind of like anything else, eventually other people are going to catch on. Um, so what I've come to realize with kind of these no rank ones, it's best if there's kind of under five to 10 sellers, obviously it depends on how quickly the item moves. But from my experience, um, that is kind of the case. So there were some I was on, it was moving really quickly. Um, a couple other people came on, maybe let's say like five or 10 people, and now it's kind of moving really slow. Um, and it's just one of those things, it's really hard to predict what is going to happen. So the no rank ones could be really lucrative, but just keep in mind, they're usually best when there's no, there's not a lot of people on those listings. And the last one, the no buy box. Um, the no buy box ones are really tough. So in this, in kind of this scenario, um, you need to be the lowest price and that you're also competing with merchant fulfilled people uh, if there's no buy box. So the buy box is extremely important um, and I've been on a couple listings now where the buy box got lost. So meaning, you know, everything was steady, everything was great, and then the buy box just goes away and now sales like literally come to a standstill. Um, I was on something that I was selling a ton of a day, the buy box got lost and I'm, it's really hard to move them. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, when you're kind of competing on listings that have no buy box, one, you're going to be going against merchant fulfilled people. Um, two, it's really hard um, to kind of just compete on those listings sometimes if there's a lot of people and the increase goes and more sellers come on the listing. Um, with all of these, I would say, um, just keep in mind. I think personally, it's really hard if things don't go well to either break even or liquidate on these listings when it comes to using a repricer, um, just because you have to have certain rules set up and it's just a little more tricky, um, especially if there's no buy box, it's kind of hard to just move things. So that's kind of why you want to be doing test buys. You don't want to be going too deep on these listings. Um, just overall, you want to have a balanced catalog. Um, will I still get on listings with no buy box and no sales rank? Yeah. Will I compete against Amazon? Uh, maybe. It's really going to depend. Um, but it's always good to try things. Again, I didn't have my whole catalog in listings like this. Um, it was more just kind of to test to see exactly what's going on. I would say probably one of the mistakes I made was... I probably could have tested a little more um, instead of going like getting 10 and then maybe ordering 30. If the 10 went well, maybe just go to 20 or 15 because things do change rather quickly um, on listings like this because they're just a little more, they're not as predictable. Um, and then, do I have anything else? All right. I had something else I want to tell you guys, but... Um, I think we'll call it here. I hope you guys have been well. I'm definitely going to be making a lot more content coming up. Um, so hope it's well. Let me know what you think in the comments. Anything that I said, uh, I'd love to hear. Or if you just have any questions, drop them below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.